Tennessee Senator Bill Haggerty. He is a member of the Foreign Relations, Appropriations, and the Banking Committees. Senator, great to see you this morning. Thanks so much morning, for joining Maria. me today. You will be questioning these nominees. What do you hope to learn? Give us a sense of how this uh, hearing goes today. You know, we're going to have three, I'm certain, very intelligent and talented people, but there's some great concern, particularly with respect to the candidate for one of the most powerful positions, that's Sarah Bloom Raskin, who's a candidate to be the vice chairman for regulatory supervision. She's talked openly, written explicitly and recently about her desire to weaponize the Fed to basically debank the oil and gas industry. Maria, if you think about where we are right now in terms of inflation, again, inflation, one of the two main mandates of the Federal Reserve, we're looking at 40-year highs, much of it driven by Biden's war on the oil and gas industry, you know, killing the Keystone XL pipeline, basically waging war on oil and gas and driving energy prices to the roof, not only here in America, but around the globe. She's talking about coming in and starving the industry further from capital. That's going to increase inflation pressure even greater, and it's going to make us more dependent on nations that have to, that, that, that pump gas that we have, uh, you know, that don't necessarily have our best interests at heart. So she is going, if she were to get through, she will be the overseer of banks. There's the most yes. important position in terms of oversight of the major banks. Is she going to try to encourage major banks or rule that major banks are not going to bank fossil fuel companies, for example? I mean, should, should we be expecting that the major banks start turning away business from, you know, the ExxonMobil's of the world and, and, and the, and the uh, small banks which need, I'm sorry, the small energy companies which need banking? Certainly, Maria. What it's going to do is, it, it, which she's talked openly about it, uh, of starving these companies for capital. She's going to use the bank regulatory apparatus to do it. We saw it happen with Operation Choke Point when the Obama Biden administration targeted the gun industry. Here she wants to target oil and gas. Who's to say that some other wow. governor comes in at some later point and targets another industry? This is not the mandate of the Federal but, Reserve. By the way, I know that this is the wife of Jamie Raskin, who is a Democrat in the House of Representatives and the person who led the January 6th investigation. Is this a favor to Jamie Raskin or does she have the credibility to be the uh, lead overseer of banks? Well, she's certainly got a strong resume. I don't know uh, what the Biden administration negotiations may have been behind the scenes. She has a strong resume, but it's her policy positions that are the problem here, Maria. And they're a big problem for America. Again, for economic security, for our national security, we should not allow nominees to come in and weaponize the Fed to achieve their own personal policy objectives. So you're a 50-50 Senate. Uh, is she going to get through? What do you think? I think I think she's going to have a very difficult time. It's going to be, I think, hard for some of my Democrat colleagues to, you know, accept the fact that she's ready to wage war on industries that are critical to their own states and, frankly, an industry that's critical to America. We've seen, again, inflation at, at running, running at massive highs, four, four decades, uh, you know, four-decade record highs for inflation. This is going to make it worse if she uses, uh, if she debanks the oil and gas industry. And, again, back to our national security. If she makes us more dependent on other nations, again, that don't have our, necessarily have our best interest at heart, that's going to be bad for our national security. So I think my colleagues are going to be listening very carefully today about what she says. And I think we should be very concerned about this, you know, again, this use of the old Democrat playbook of basically weaponizing the regulatory construct here in Washington to get policies passed that the public would never vote for. Yeah, well, you make a lot of good points. I, I find it extraordinary that President Biden continues to lean toward the extreme left and uh, yes. put up very, very progressive candidates, even though the public is rejecting his agenda. It's if he's not listening to the American people at all. Um, and you mentioned being reliant on foreign, uh, foreign countries for oil and gas. How about Russia? I mean, President Biden is sending more than 3,000 troops to Eastern Europe right now. Uh, he says it's going to back up NATO allies with thousands more on standby for deployment. This marks America's first major move of U.S. forces in the Russia-Ukraine border standoff. The Senate will be briefed today on the escalating tensions between Russia and Ukraine. But what can you tell us now about this? Can you explain 3,000 troops uh, going to Eastern Europe? Not one of them expected in Ukraine. They're not going to go to Ukraine. This is just for NATO countries, Poland, Germany, Romania. It's, you know, it's just amazing, Maria. You've done such a great job of educating the American public about what's happening in our southern border. The Biden administration is unwilling to defend our southern border, yet he's willing to send troops uh, overseas to stand up and protect another nation's borders. I think it's really preposterous when you look at it. And if you think about the number, 3,000 troops against 120,000 troops from Russia, this is nothing more than a messaging exercise. 
I think Vladimir Putin's heard enough messaging from the United States, from the Biden administration. We need to actually demonstrate our resolve and take action. And that sort of action needs to be in the form of sanctions. Sanctions now, not waiting until after something happens. I mean, you know, Vladimir Putin has benefited from sanctions uh, being waived by the Biden administration already. Just look at Nord Stream 2. Congress has passed sanctions that the Biden administration has waived in his favor. We need to demonstrate our resolve right now to demonstrate American strength and sanction him now. But everybody's saying the same thing, Senator, that the sanctions should go into place right now. I mean, what does Joe Biden say? I mean, I, I find it extraordinary, well, frankly, that the only leverage point the United States has is something Joe Biden gave to Russia six months ago, the Nord Stream yeah. pipeline. Is that, is that all we've got? Well, we, we have other sanctions that we could put in place, but I think the, the major discussion here in the Congress right now is on the timing of sanctions. And there's a great deal of pressure on the Democrat side to make the sanctions only come into effect after Putin has acted. We need to give Putin a taste of what's to come. And again, I think it's critically important, Maria, that we finally step up and demonstrate American strength, American resolve, and that means imposing sanctions now. Nord Stream 2 would be a great start. All right. Senator, thanks for your leadership. Great to catch up with you. Thank you, Thank sir. You, Maria. Bill Haggerty joining us this morning in D.C. We'll see you soon.